Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a face crack apart in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And we got a really cool tutorial for you. This is actually a two part tutorial. We're doing part one today and then part two is going to be up tomorrow. In part one, we're basically gonna be taking a face and an image of just some like cracked paint. We're gonna be combining them together to make it look like her face is actually like cracking and peeling apart. In part two, we're going to be really like making all the textures kind of work with each other and doing some special effects there as well. This is a cool effect. Now, this is not something obviously you're gonna do most of the time, but if you guys are looking for just an interesting special effect in a way to kind of like test your Photoshop knowledge, this is a perfect tutorial for you. Let's get into it, it's gonna be awesome. Awesome. So here are our images for today. We're gonna to be working on this portrait by Michael, which is just an awesome portrait. It's gorgeous. I kind of hate to <laughs> make her face crack off on it, but uh, it's just a perfect portrait for this effect. And then we've got our texture. This is just basically cracking paint, and uh, this is by Liz West on Flickr. So you guys can take these yourself, just you know, walk around the city, especially like a city here in Chicago, we walk around and take all kinds of cool grungy pictures. So the first thing we're gonna do, let's go ahead and use our move tool to just click and drag from one Im image to the other, and that's going to allow us to just have both of these on the same document. I'm gonna hit F to full screen this, and now we wanna get this like sized in place and everything like that correctly. So I'm gonna hit V and then the number five, which is gonna bring our opacity down to about 50%. So with this, it's really, really important the scale and which type of texture and things like that you use. It's, you know, you wanna make sure that you're using a texture that's really gonna fit and you get it put in the right place. I'm gonna hit Command T and that's gonna bring up our transform dialog. I can hit the chain link here and then kind of scale the width and the height. So I can get, kind of decide, you know, where I want this to look like. And don't be afraid to like, you know, rotate these things around. Like there's a big indent there. Uh, we could put that on our forehead or you know, down here on her cheek or wherever have you. I, I kind of like this, I think it looks good. I'm not too interested in having too much like cover her eyes and stuff like that. Um, maybe rotate this around a little bit more. All right, or let's just try, I'm gonna right click here and say flip horizontal so you can flip things around as well. Okay, that's pretty cool. And we're gonna hit enter. So that's a good start. Now. When you're doing this, you can start off, we're gonna have to like kind of make the texture look like it's kind of wrapping around her face as well. So it totally flat like this is not gonna work. It's just taken on a wall. So the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna hit Command T, right click and we're gonna go down to warp now. And I'm gonna take our corners and just kind of warp them in. So you can just click and drag your corners in. And this is just gonna help it kind of like wrap around her face. And then we've got these little anchor points and you can kind of pull these in as well to define it, kind of make it, it, it basically is gonna look like it's wrapping around her face. So this is basically the first part where we're doing the majority of the warping and the wrapping. And then we're gonna go into the liquify tool where we're gonna take care of the rest there. And you can decide here like how much you actually want to be visible on your subject. I'm, I'm gonna take some of this off because I, I don't want so much actually visible right on her face. I, I don't mind if it's a little bit less visible. There we go. All right, cool. Especially around her eyes and things like that. Cool, let's hit enter there and we're good to go. So this looks pretty good so far. It's, it's on her face, it's not blended in or anything like that, but it's like actually, it's starting to look like it's wrapping. So now that you've done the warp, the next step you wanna do is liquify. And this is a really, really cool step. This is basically, what's gonna make it like really look like it's wrapping around her face. So here are layer one, what we're gonna do is go to filter and then down here to liquify. Now it's gonna open up a dialog box and by default you're gonna get something that looks like this and this is not very helpful because I can't see her face or anything like that. So what we wanna do is I wanna hit this show backdrop button. Now here you can choose to use, you can use all layers, you can use the mode and things like that. What we wanna do is choose our background layer. Okay, so this is gonna show us basically, this is our layer one and this is our background. 
but you'll st still see we have some transparency in here. And that's because the layer that we have selected is at 50% opacity. So I'm gonna hit escape. Let's just bring that opacity back to 100. We'll go to filter and then down here to liquify. Okay, and there we go. Let's choose our background. There we go. And now we should be able to move. There we go. We can change our opacity as well. So you can see like how much or how little this layer is visible on our subject. And you can choose to have the layer in front of it, in behind it, whatever you want to do. There we go. All right, that behind looks pretty good. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger and we're gonna use this forward warp tool to then just kind of push things in. And this is just gonna help it really start to wrap. And my suggestion here is, especially around these edges, like start from pretty far out and kind of work your way in. What that's gonna do is it's going to compress some of these textures. So you can see like the, the little bits of cracks and things like that. They're getting closer and closer together because I'm compressing them. So that way when they get to the edge of her face, they're going to be you know, closer and closer together and that's gonna really sell that look that it's actually wrapping around her face. All right, there we go. We'll just continue to bring this in. So this is where a lot of the work is going to be done to make it look real. And we haven't started like actually blending or anything like that. But if it just looks like it's you know a totally flat image, that's never gonna look like it's actually wrapping around someone's face. So we do wanna be sure to kind of push this in. And again, you can change your opacity here to kind of like figure out, okay, where is her face start and stop? And just kind of like push this in to the edges there. All right, and this is fun. What I'm doing is just clicking and dragging from the outside into the image. All right, just a whole bunch of times. Now, you can choose to have your density and pressure a little bit higher than mine, and that's going to allow these effects to happen more quickly. Like, you won't have to click, push, and drag as many times. It'll, it'll actually do it a little bit faster. I prefer to work a little bit on the uh, slow side when it comes to liquify tool, like having to click and move things around a lot. I find that it helps me to make less errors. So either one you want, if you wanna just bring your pressure and density up, that's gonna help you push those in, but I prefer to go a little bit slower. And I'm coming just to the edge of her skin. You don't have to make this perfect. We are gonna be using a layer mask in just a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good. So we're gonna hit okay there. And now you can see the texture is wrapped around. And you can see by there by the edges, it actually does look like it's wrapping. So that's a huge part of our job done. Now we're gonna do one more thing with the liquify tool. And to do this, I'm gonna hit command J to duplicate this layer because what we're gonna be doing next is like going around the eyes and the mouth and things like that. And I just wanna be sure that when I do this, um, I have a backup copy just in case I don't like what I've do, done. Okay, so let's make that invisible. Let's go on this layer one copy, we'll go to filter, we're going to go down to liquify again, and then we are gonna say, instead of all layers, we want to be our background layer, just making sure that background is the layer that our subject is on. Okay, great, and now it's time to basically get our subject to make it look like her facial features are also being wrapped. So this is a really cool trick here. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna use this mask tool. There we go, somewhere right around there, the freeze mask. Now what the freeze mask is gonna do, let's go ahead and bring the density up with our freeze mask. That's going to not allow wherever we paint with the freeze mask, it's going to not allow any transformations to happen. Let's just erase that right over here. So I'm going right around her nose. So what that means is if I push this texture, you can see it's gonna stop at the edge of the freeze mask. Like I can push it here and the, where the freeze mask is, isn't moving. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow me to create some edges, especially on areas like where her nose is, which is really cool. So let's hit okay and you guys can see, it's gonna push around and look like it's kind of curving around her nose. There we go, but it stops there, which is really cool. Okay, so let's do that one more time. We're gonna zoom in and then this time I'm gonna take care of all of our layers, or all of the different facial effects, features, 
whatever they're called. Feel free to just call things whatever you want. <laughs> All right, there we go. And we're going to push this in. Okay, looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and create another freeze mask right around this part of her nose. Okay, and we're going to make this a little bit smaller and we're going to push it in that way. Cool. Let's hit okay. All right, that looks pretty good. And then we're just going to do the same thing again and we'll do this with her with her eyes now. Okay, so zooming in here, it's nice so you can kind of get a preview of what's actually going on. You can kind of push and pull these however, however you'd like. Let's get a freeze mask here, and I'm gonna paint this right above the fold of her eyelid. There we go. And then this is just gonna kind of come in, and I'm gonna move it ever so slightly around. And this is just gonna really help it look like it's, you know, actually starting to move around her eye. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing here. Again, we're gonna come right above the fold of our eyelash there. All right, because you want it to make it look like it's actually moving with the skin. That's gonna be the trick that's gonna make these effects look actually real, is if they look like they're actually moving, you know, with the skin. All right, that looks pretty good there. Let's hit okay. Subtle changes, but they're gonna make a big difference. Okay, let's go one more time, filter down to liquefy, and then we're just gonna take care of just general, um, general areas on the face. All right, so like her lips, we're gonna pull this up. Let's bring our pressure up to affect it a little bit more. We're gonna pull these areas up, right to around the lips, and then down here to kind of meet them. All right, I love doing this sort of thing. It's super fun, and obviously it's not supposed to be taken that seriously, because it's just a, you know, it's a crack on someone's face, and <laughs> rarely will you get to be able to do this sort of thing, like, you know, for a job, or, you know, something that actually requires being serious, but doing it for fun is awesome. Okay, there we go. That looks great. So we've taken care of that. We have our backup layer. I can go ahead and delete that backup layer because we like what we've done with this layer. All right, so the next step we've done. So we've done getting the texture in place. We've gone over warping it. We've gone over using the liquify tool. Now we're gonna do first steps on blending and then we're gonna end this tutorial and then we're gonna pick up with part one. So the first step on blending, what we wanna do is basically, I need to get rid of this white area because I really only want the dark area to be visible on our subject's face. So you can use a bunch of different layer masks to basically get, or sorry, blending modes to get that effect. So blending modes such as multiply, basically what those do is it makes the lighter areas invisible. So now only the darker area is visible. Okay, and that's a pretty good start with this image, but you can see we've got some yellow and some weird greens and stuff like that, that's not really looking that great. It doesn't look like it belongs on our skin. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer, we're gonna go to hue slash saturation, and I'm gonna colorize this effect. So if I just hit colorize here and start moving my color slider around, you're gonna see it changes our entire image. So what we need to do is use a clipping mask, and that's gonna clip the hue saturation to just the textures. So to do that, just right click here and go to create clipping mask. There we go. And you can see now, instead of affecting the entire image, it's only affecting the layer that that clipping mask is actually pointing to. So we're gonna go down to our, our red slash orange range and choose a hue. Like obviously that doesn't really look good, right? So we're just gonna choose somewhere right about there and then choose about how saturated we want these cracks to look like, and then you can even play with lightness and darkness. I would recommend leaving that at zero. All right, so you can see what a big difference that makes. Just kind of makes everything look like, you know, a little bit more like skin color, which is exactly what we want. All right, now the next thing is this layer is, it's looking pretty good, but it's not there yet. Uh, the reason is I want this layer basically to be visible you can see even the lighter areas are still affecting this layer. So there are a couple different things you can do. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer. We're gonna go to curves, option command G, and then I'm gonna make the whites a little bit whiter. 
Okay, you can do this by dragging it up that way or just dragging the whites a little bit brighter like that. You can make your darks darker as well. There we go. The reason we're doing that and it works is because this layer blending mode is on multiply. So the lights don't show up. So if you make your lights a little bit lighter, that means that the lights, the highlights are not going to show up. So you can do it that way. Let's just delete that. Or you can double click on your layer itself, click on your blend if, which is right over here. Okay, and then say for this layer, hold alt or option, I don't want the lighter areas to be visible. Okay, so there are a couple different ways you can actually do it. And this is, this is the way we're gonna use right now. Um, I'm a huge fan of blend if. If you guys have been watching Flurin for a while, you will already know that. Okay, so we're gonna hit okay. And we're already looking pretty good. Yeah, let's, let's change that a little bit. I wanna make sure that we still are seeing some detail. There we go. All right, and that looks pretty good. We've got these cracks on our face and they're starting to look good. It's not, they're not there just yet, but they are starting to look good. Let's go ahead and put a layer mask on this and just make sure we mask out anywhere we don't want these cracks to be visible, such as over top of her eyeballs. We don't want any cracks there. So I'm just painting black on the layer mask over top of her eyes, here where it you know, goes off over top of her teeth and stuff like that. Small details, but that's gonna wind up making a big difference when it comes to the final image. All right, and then what we're gonna go ahead and do is just mask it away from where it does not touch our subject's face. All right, and for this tutorial, we're just gonna do the subject's face, but if you wanted to cover someone's body, you could do the exact same techniques and just go over their body. Now, you will notice that this fo the photo is very in focus where her face is and it slowly goes out of focus. You can see it goes out of focus. So we're gonna take care of that in part two as well as giving these cracks a bit more depth and uh, really making them blend into the image. So that's it for part one, guys. Thanks so much for watching Florin, guys. I hope you liked this episode. Super fun adding cracks to someone's face. Why not? If you guys like what we're doing here at Florin, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can leave us a comment right down below. If you guys have an idea of any episodes you'd like to see in the future, that's where you put them. And if you have anyone in your life who you think might be interested in tutorials on Photoshop and photography, be sure to hit that share button. Thanks so much, and we'll learn you later. Bye, guys. Woo! Smells good. What's cooking? Croissants. It's a French day at the studio. Croissants.